pretty good progress. Kind of looks like a rocket now. Of course, better not say that. Might get banned from YouTube. Uh, these are the gussets for the base plate or the base pipe rather. Um, got these leveled out. Just some short welds on it right now. I'm probably going to stitch weld it uh, on stainless to run the risk of just totally warping this. Of course it looks warped just because of the GoPro but it's straight. So I'll probably just run some stitch welds. I don't think this needs to be fully welded anyways. I uh, got this box all welded out. Came out really nice. Here's kind of a uh, detail on these uh, pipe thread couplings for the wire gland pass-throughs. Staggered them too so you'll be able to tighten them. Really nice colors with this wire. And this is going to get a cover. Coming along pretty darn nice. So we'll get these welded. And then the next step is going to be to drill the holes and tap them uh, to be able to fasten this cover down. So I think that's what we'll do next after we get this gussets welded. And to lay these uh, gussets out, pretty nice. With this table, the way I built it with the channel iron, I can get uh, the pipe will fit pretty much up to three inch diameter. It'll fit in between these gaps. Lay the pipe in there. I make sure that it's true to this square. Pretty nice. You can see that's perfectly true. And then I struck just a reference line with the marker. Um, that's where I laid my first gusset out. And then I took a angle finder. Found zero. And that's how I got the alignment on this gusset. Pretty easy. And I can line it up both ways. Perfect. So here's just a uh, demonstration of why I feather those tacks. You can see that was an existing weld, and this is a new weld. You can see no big bump. Also, have really good tie-in. I don't have any craters or anything, so that's exactly what you're looking for. Um, this gusset is starting to warp. I know I said I wasn't going to fully weld it, and here I am. I'm welding it out. Uh, not bad. Move to the other side. Let this side cool off. I'm also keeping an eye on my uh, intrapass temperatures. Don't want this to get above 500 degrees, which we're well away from that. 140, 370, that's the well we just made. So we're pretty good, but you can see that's why I'm flip-flopping from one side to the other. Again, there's a really good example of why you need to feather your start and your stop. You can see the perfect sign in there. You can also see I radius my gusset corners. So I don't have a super sharp edge. And also, it gives me something to wrap. So I can tie that in real, real nice. And here's another one here. You can see this was fairly crooked because I had only welded on that side. By letting my welds cool down, and then counteracting it with another weld, straighten it out perfectly. You see those nice colors in there. And also uh, a good tie-in too. A little bit of spatter on that corner of the gusset. My arc length was a little long and my gut angle was wrong, but it's okay. And the other thing too, you can see I've got grind marks there. That's my channel where I'm going to end my weld. But if you notice, I'm running that 
puddle just a little beyond that grind mark. You can see that grind mark isn't even visible now. So that's the whole objective. You want to carry that puddle just a little bit beyond your grind mark where you feathered your tack. Laying out the um, cover plate that's going to fit over this. So again, this pass through is so the uh, technician when he's wiring everything he can get his hand in there. These bolts are going to go into the dome uh, from underneath. So I'm just going to use a piece of, uh, I think this is 16 gauge stainless. There's a little bit of a bow to it, but this is kind of the best section. Um, just lay out my cover. I'll probably use a skinny disc to cut that. We'll see. And then I will drill my holes. It's going to be four quarter inch holes. And then I'll use that as a template. Use a transfer punch to get my holes over here. Well, second to final step, well, maybe third. Got to clean all the oxidation off of these welds, otherwise it'll just rust up. Uh, need to tap the holes, uh, you can't see them. Actually, yeah, they're over here. Need to tap these for that cover. And also, this piece of quarter inch stainless round bar. Gonna tack that on uh, as a wire chase because the antenna feed lines are going to go through the waterproof packing glands, like so. And then they'll put a service loop in, drip loop, and they need somewhere to fasten the zip ties as it comes down this mount. So um, I might offset it a little bit so we can run it all the way down this gusset. I don't know. We'll see. It's going to go down. This is where it's going to be welded onto the mast. So kind of think about that but then this job should be done it's kind of nice to use uh, smaller round stock for this stuff it doesn't need to be super heavy duty it's just gonna be a cable support so I can just hand form that in my vise and then uh, trim this extra end off I think I am gonna run it down this way kind of offset otherwise if I were to end it right here then you've got 12 inches of cable that's not supported so we'll do an offset run it down this face clear that gusset and that way we can support that cable all nice
Got the wire chase rail, for lack of a better term, welded in. It's pretty nice and strong. It was a little flimsy with no uh, additional supports. So that's why I welded those two in. I had the scrap, so that'll be really nice. You can run that antenna feed line like that. Down there, zip tie it. Perfect. Now, just have to tap these holes, put the cover on, and we're good to go.